Welcome to another episode of Ask the Zamboni Experts. I'm your host, Marty Elliott. And today we are joined by Patrick Gesso. He's the Ice Operations Assistant Manager at Emaly Arena, home of the Tampa Bay Lightning in Tampa Bay, Florida. Patrick, welcome. How's it going, Marty? Fantastic. Glad you could make it on. I know you're uh, you're a busy man uh, operating that facility. It's a very busy facility. And uh, let's just jump into this uh, right now. Let's talk a bit about, uh, if you can share with the audience, uh, Patrick, your background and, and where you worked and um, how you ended up uh, being in a position as Ice Operations Assistant Manager for uh, Amelia Arena. Yeah, I actually uh, started working at the practice facility of Brandon Ice Sports Forum uh, back in, I think, 04, uh, just after we won the cup, the first cup, and then uh, worked there for about four years, uh, learned how to drive the Zamboni there, uh, and then uh, uh, the guy that actually uh, taught me actually was over here at the Amway Arena at the time uh, and uh, was one of the ones that actually uh, put the little pendant into the ice at Center Ice, the little Zamboni for, for our good luck uh, run there in 04. Uh, well, but after that, yeah, it was uh, kind of a surreal moment. Um, I wasn't physically there, but uh, he did tell me about it all a lot and uh, what he did and whatnot. And then uh, I actually in 08, February 26, 08, I uh, worked my way over to uh, the Amley Arena now and uh, been there ever since. Maybe we can touch base a little bit on the uh, superstitions and what took place there in 04. Um, who was that gentleman, by the way, that uh, put that uh, Monopoly uh, Zamboni piece in the ice? Yeah, uh, Ryan Welty was the one that actually put it in there. Um, him and Tom Miracle were there and uh, made it made it like a little good luck charm for us in 04. <laughs> yes, the beautiful late Tom Miracle. What a, a great man. You worked underneath Tom, I, I take it, for a while. Yes, yes. I uh, Since 04, since 08, actually, uh, I... Uh, kind of learned everything from him from you know basic just refrigeration to zamboning and ice operations side of things just everything for i think 12 years now 13. <laughs> well a great mentor no question about that great mentor so what got you into the business you started at the pr practice facility what was it that brought you into the industry honestly i uh, was in college at the time and i needed a part-time job I knew how to skate uh, just from a uh, local rink and stuff like that. And I just needed a part-time job. So I worked as a skate guard for a while. And then uh, they came to me and said, hey, would you like to uh, be promoted and uh, learn how to drive the Zamboni? And so I said, heck yeah, like who wouldn't want to, you know? So uh, I uh, learned my ways up there or uh, over there and then uh, kind of just worked my way up from there. And and it's interesting. What is it? The three favorite things people love to watch: a uh, crackling fire, a uh, a river streaming, and uh, a zamboni doing uh, ice. Yes. Uh, cleaning yes. ice. Three things. Yeah. Yes, well, definitely. Hey, are you from Florida, by the way, Pat? Yeah, actually, I'm born and raised from here. Uh, I actually have family from Pittsburgh area, but uh, we used to go up there all the time and skate and stuff like that on the winter time. So uh, I'm kind of you know used to the cold as well. Um, but born and bred here in Tampa, Florida. Fantastic. So let's uh, let's take the audience to what it looks like uh, for a day for you, uh, pre-game, uh, game time, and uh, post-game, what you actually do to prep for yourself, for your uh, colleagues, uh, and what you actually do as far as preventative maintenance, uh, day of or weekly uh, or as needed, uh, maybe you can share with the audience. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we actually come in at seven o'clock in the morning and our first thing, me and Allie will come in and start filling up our Zambonis. Um, and then we'll go out to uh, the ice just to check up on it, to see what's going on. Uh, usually it's nothing, you know, out of the ordinary, but um, we'll uh, actually take out the Z uh, our edger, which is a the new uh, uh, easy uh, electric edger from Zamboni. Um, we, uh, we just go out there and um, do a nice shaving on the edge. Uh, we'll scrape it. And then once that is finished, usually our Zamboni is full and ready to go. Um, I'll go down to the plant. She'll actually go out on this machine. 
I'll, I'll lower the plant uh, to a degree or so, and then uh, she'll go out there and get ready to go. And she'll usually do, does a, like a dry cut is what we call it. And then uh, with a wash and then uh, do a light make to prep for the practice, morning practice or even uh, an injured guy coming out there in the morning. Uh, usually we don't know till the day before <laughs> or the night before, I should say, on the practices or even um, the injured guy as well. Uh, but once we get that going, uh, once we get the flooding, we uh, usually just uh, drill the holes, get the nets out there kind of thing, and then uh, just wait until <laughs> they come out if not we will uh uh just kind of wait it out honestly because sometimes it's sometimes they like to go out there before or even after we uh they have initially told us <laughs> so right, um, right. so after after morning skates or so uh we actually uh one of us will actually go out there after our team practice and take the nets off fill in the holes if we need to and sometimes we actually have a, it's called a rink of dreams. Uh, we uh, have like a local local rink uh, reach out to us and they uh, purchase like a, t a ticket and ice time for it. It's like a package deal. And then we go out there and they skate for about an hour and play a hockey game. <clears throat> so, excuse me. Um, and we do that for them uh, every game day. Uh, and then we get prepped for the, uh, the night of the game. Um, Usually around two thirty, three o'clock, we usually have time to actually do some maintenance. Um, we fill in some holes, or we, if we have a low spot, we'll actually do a little extra flooding there, um, just to kind of get ready for the game is, uh, itself. And then uh, we we kind of just do floods constantly uh, till about four thirty or so, and then uh, we kind of shut it down and let the the ice kind of tighten up with our temps. Uh, usually we check our temps every hour or so throughout the day. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, it's a pretty like monotonous thing we do, but we, de we definitely try to check every aspect of our day um, with the times and stuff like that. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a pretty cool, it's a, uh, like pretty cool uh, just situation, I guess. And <laughs> it's right, pretty, right. Uh, it's pretty neat. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, being uh, being up here, and a question I have for you: the challenges, nuances of trying to maintain ice in the climate that you are in, which has a uh, high uh, 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 dense of humidity, of course, um, and the weather. I mean, how do you guys manage it? Uh, you constantly must be uh, playing with the plant and your humidity uh, levels. Yeah, definitely. Like so, during the games, where our the most constant uh, problem we actually have to deal with is the humidity itself um temps we can get it down it's just trying to dry out the building um we can usually maintain that throughout the day because there isn't anyone in the building but once stores open is when we kind of lose all control so to speak uh we actually we have a positive pressure building so that therefore it pushes down onto the ice and then everything goes it blasts outward so if you open the door the curtain will actually blow outwards away from us um which is a good thing um we do like to uh try and maintain that key, at least keep it inside but um when everyone wants to come in at the same time it's pretty difficult so usually so that, we have our go ahead yeah no i was uh <clears throat> sorry to interrupt uh, this down pressure uh, share a little bit more about that because it's opposite in most facilities they're opening curtains uh, uh for uh, uh, patrons to come in and sit down yeah uh, how does that work we, uh, so we, our HVAC system actually has a uh, fabric, so to speak, or a sock is what we call it. Um, it actually will push down onto the ice directly. Um, a lot of times uh, it's maintains that obviously, but once the doors open, everything will kind of uh, go away from us because it's trying to find the hotter air, air and that's where it, you know, it goes to once the doors are open. Um, whenever we do open the doors, it's usually um, pretty much a uh, just try to get it as cold as we can beforehand and dry it out um, with our engineering crew. Uh, we're pretty good at doing that now. 
it's been a it's been a struggle the last couple of years just because we've been war- playing so late into the summer or even into the season so to speak um but <laughs> yes it's not a bad thing to have and no. uh it's definitely uh an eye-opening experience for sure uh just trying to bring in all this other extra stuff that we actually do um but we do try to just try and shut the doors curtains are shut during the games do everything we can to kind of keep that you know all that air into the inside the building um we with with you know 20,000 fans it's pretty difficult to do that down here but uh we we do our best and honestly we actually have uh really good ice temps um from from the last couple of years even all the way all the way back to uh, 10 years ago so um i kind of just follow what tom miracles taught me and basically uh just kind of emulate that as much as i can nice so you're working off slab temp at your facility what would your morning yeah. look like on slab temp uh and typically in the industry you're adding three degrees uh to slab to get your surface temp but where would you start the day of game and where do you actually finish uh let's talk uh, second period uh, flood where would you be at start honestly finish? we actually uh we we try to get maintain a 16 degree slab temp and then our surfaces are usually around 20 to 21 in the morning um then around game time, uh, during before the uh, the game actually starts, uh, I'll go down there and check it, and uh, I'll, lo- I'll lower it back again. Uh, we usually raise up our temps after morning skate uh, just to kind of let it relax a little bit, and then uh, we usually around 17, 18 degrees we'll we'll have it, and then I'll lower it back down to 16 or so. Um, during the game time, it's usually a hit or miss. It's there's sometimes where I'm bringing it down to 14 to 15 degrees on the slab, as well as maybe even um, 16. The other day we actually had a cold temperature uh, drop over here, down here, and uh, it was around it was around uh, like 30 degrees outside, and we actually had to raise it up, which was kind of a a, a weird experience for us down here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Living in our world. Like, no, yeah, exactly. I was uh, getting ready to say that you guys probably are used to hearing something like that, but um, we usually, actually, I had it up to like 17 degrees on the slab, uh, just so during the game it would uh, maintain our 16-ish, so to speak, or our surface temp around 22 or 21 degrees. So All right, nice. uh, during during the like for a normal normal you know Florida day. We usually have it around 16 degrees in the pregame. Um, I'll bump it down to 15 because I know um, with all the fans and everything else coming in, it's uh, it's it's a struggle at that time. So I'll actually bump it down to 15 or so, and then uh, usually our temps around 21, 22 degrees um, throughout the game. After that, nice. What uh, what thickness of ice are you carrying uh, pre uh, and game time? What do you try to carry? Uh, we like to try and carry about an inch and a quarter, um, sometimes an inch and a third or even a fourth um, or an, a half, sometimes just because we found it, it to be uh, a little bit of an easier process for us because we actually cut full buckets um, every time we're out there during the games, um, pregame, uh, intermissions, and even post, well, sometimes post game, but um, usually intermissions and uh after warm-ups and stuff like that will actually cut a lot right so th- that leads me to my next question <laughs> when you say cutting a bucket full help me understand help the audience understand well, how do you guys determine that you're cutting a bucket and i know in the nhl i think it's the two minute mark is last time the shovels come out if i'm not mistaken and then whatever surface snow is left you guys are grabbing uh during your flood so how much do you actually know that you're actually cutting uh, on the actual original ice surface. Do you, do you guys uh, have any tools that you work with? Oh yeah, we actually have the Ice Tech 8 actually back in the day. Uh, they came up with a um, depth reader uh, electronically and you could plug it into the computer and it gives you a grid of the the ice surface. And so there's points where you can go and it'll basically go down, shoot shoot down onto the ice and it'll give you your, your depth in, of you know, ice that you have. So we actually use that pregame and postgame. Um, right. And we determine, usually it's around a quarter of an inch, sometimes even a half an inch of ice that we cut. Um, usually it's around a quarter of an inch though, uh, of ice that we actually cut down throughout the game. Right. Uh, 
And as far as uh, producing new ice using the flood water, how much are you actually putting down per flood? Do you guys uh, uh, regulate that? Yeah, um, we it's we kind of have it. We used to have the the fast ice system, but uh, years ago, um, once once we bought the new uh, Zambonis uh, back in 2010, back then, um, we we did not go with that route. But uh, I, I would say that we put down uh, a good amount of water. It's, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it to where we pull like full buckets of water or anything like that, but uh, we we usually put down just to replenish enough to where we can get it uh, all the skate grooves filled in. Uh, I right. couldn't give you an exact number, but uh, we usually try to maintain as much as we can with the flooding. And uh, sure. So would you uh, because you're uh, operating 500 models, uh, which is 174 uh, gallons U.S. gallons? Yeah. Would you guys be putting that full amount down per machine on a double machine? No. Time? No. no, it's usually like a half, probably half okay. that, if that, um, for both of us. So I would say one of them, one of those machines would be put down, um, just half of it. So in a perfect scenario, uh, Pat wakes up in the morning, and goes, um, uh, I have these options that I want. These are my dream options. What would they be on your machine? Uh, honestly, I actually am old school. I actually like what I like to control. Um, I do like the mop system where it's just the basic uh, Zamboni where there's no fast ice or anything like that. I mean, in a perfect world, yeah, I'd like to have the fast ice, but uh, with our building, we have little to none on the uh, just maintenance wise. It's it's tough with our building being so busy, which is a good thing. Um, we're, we're so busy with concerts and stuff like that, that it's, it's a struggle to uh, kind of do a lot of maintenance to it but when we do we try to do as much as we can with what we have so mm -hmm. uh, i'm actually pretty old school though i like i like having the control and, and, and adjusting the water when i want to right what about uh as far as because you and ali are game time uh, uh operators is that correct yes yes in sir. most cases does anyone else operate the machines uh besides yourselves yeah i actually have a crew of uh three others uh justin Brustlick and uh, Eric Gibson and Mike Gretz um, help me out throughout the year. Uh, we do, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know, from Disney on, on ice to uh, high school hockey to college hockey, you name it, we can we can do it. So it's pretty, uh, it's a good crew. Uh, I appreciate every single one of them for doing all their hard work and stuff like that throughout the year, because I know it's a struggle for everybody. Yeah, that leads me to the next question, changeovers. What's your uh, facility look like over a 30-day uh, period um, from uh, non-ice events uh, to ice events? And how do you guys manage that? The changeover is phenomenal. They, uh, they do a great job. As soon as we get done with our, you know, maintenance after the game, post-game, we'll uh, have them take the reins, so to speak. And uh, they do a great job. It's, it's crazy from one of seeing one one set up to another i guess in a matter of hours uh i w i actually worked part of that when i first started uh here at the amelie arena but uh it's a pretty cool experience to uh know how to do all that stuff it's pretty uh incredible yeah it's uh, i've seen it happen uh live and it is pretty uh, amazing what the uh, changeover crew can do taking the boards out taking glass out yeah. uh, it's uh and then putting their uh their surface down over the ice yeah a lot of people yeah. don't realize that uh when they're in concerts the ice is actually underneath their feet right yeah that. that's that's probably one of the number one question that i get a lot is uh is the ice in or do they they ex they almost expect it to, for me to say that I build it every time I, there's after a show or something. So it's kind of crazy when I tell them like, no, the ice is under there still. It's uh, yeah. it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, our crew is nothing like Boston's or Chicago's or any of the Philadelphia where they have uh, basketball the same day as the hockey game. That's that's what blows my mind is having a crew of like 200 or 300 it's just, uh, how the amount of speed that they do and doing uh, it safely. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be, I'm going to be selfish here and, uh, I, I have to put this out, uh, due to the fact because, uh, being the product specialist, both for level ice and uh, fast ice, um, yeah. hopefully you might reconsider uh, version two fast ice. Yeah. 
a lot of talk. For sure, I know, yeah. I know, I know you've seen it, but I, and I speak to uh, the NHL uh, facilities, stadium facilities that are using it. The one thing they recognized having fast ice is set up times a lot quicker because yeah. sales and marketing of the of the uh, of the uh, NHL team they got a lot going on during periods. Is that yeah. ever a challenge for you because you have so much humidity down there to make sure that ice is set up for the time the players get back on after 20 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, we try to get off there as quickly as we possibly can. Um, obviously, in a safe and you know good manner of when we're out there driving, but uh, we try to like have our six minute mark is what we call it, and try to get off by then. And usually by then, it's uh, it's setting up right at right when the referees are coming out around the two minute mark or so. Um, but yeah, it is a challenge. Uh, there are the days that it is warmer. Obviously, like last year for us, we were playing through May and June, it's uh, it's pretty tough around that time of year um, for anybody, but especially us uh, with the humidity, it's just constantly uh, beating down. Uh, there's no, even overnights, it's it's pretty tough. It's 80 degrees out at night and <laughs> you're sweating your butt, uh, butt off. So it's, uh, it's tough, but we try to maintain as much as we can. Yeah, it's fascinating how you guys can get her done down there with all that humidity and what yeah. uh, takes place uh, in your environment. So yeah, some of the – sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I said the no. engineering crew does a great job with our HVAC system. So they – I mean, they're awesome. They uh, We keep constant contact with each other, let each other know, other, other know that uh, our temps, stuff like that throughout the day. So they, they do an awesome job. So I wanted to give them a shout-out for that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of people don't realize, uh, as as you know, a patron going to a hockey game, what happens behind the scenes. I mean, I am sure you and Ali are wearing headsets, speaking to the the engineering uh, department, uh, yeah. working the uh, refrigeration plant. You guys are constantly talking during uh, floods. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I wouldn't say during the floods, but at least prior prior to or even after uh, what I see. Um, sometimes if it's a little bit warmer, I'll tell them like, hey. We're, uh, it seems to be running a little bit warmer out or the humidity is kind of up a little bit, which is always the case for us. But um, we'll, uh, we'll try to make an adjustments and try to uh, kind of beat it before we see it kind of thing. Um, with our, you know, with, with it being warm all the time, I mean, down here, usually it's pretty constantly that we're, we're just trying to maintain the dryness of the building, so to speak. Yeah, what would you guys carry your humidity point at? What do you try to carry? Yeah. Uh, uh, between 55 and 59 degrees, but that's sometimes a struggle. <laughs> we, yeah. It usually jumps up to 63% on our humidity right away in the in the building whenever the, everyone comes in. So after 63, it's like, all right, well, let's just shut the, all the doors as much as we can and the curtains and try to dry it out as much as we can. We usually do a pretty good job of trying to get it down to 60 or 59-ish uh, percent. So. Do you use do you use antifog uh, uh, repellent on your glass? <laughs> oh, actually, no, we don't. But luckily, we don't have to have we don't have that problem, which is good. <laughs> yeah, that is good. That is good. So let's talk about and you already touched base on it. Uh, maybe we can d uh, dive a little deeper for our uh, industry uh, folks that are listening in on the uh, podcast here. Um, ice maintenance. Um, do you guys get into doing cross zone cuts, uh, figure eights, all the fun stuff of ice maintenance? Yeah, I actually like to do that. Uh, try to do that every, you know, every other week or so, just depending on what we have in the building. Um, just the other day, I actually did a cross cut and a figure eight at the same time, or at the, at the same on the same day. But um, I like to do that as much as I can, uh, especially with the, all the events that we have now going on. Again, um, it's always a good thing to have and do. Um, I even tell my guys that are uh, doing local ranks to try and do it as much as you can, either once every few weeks if you can, or every other week or so. But uh, yeah, I do cross cuts, figure eights. I even uh, cut down on the edges. I actually will back into the corners and just do a dry scrape just to kind of knock down the corners, so to speak, too. Nice, nice. Just yeah. uh, jump over a page here. Maybe you can share with the uh, folks that are listening. Uh, some funny stories, some that uh, you've experienced uh, while working with the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, player or oh. non-player events, maybe uh, something you can share uh, that's uh, happened uh, during your tenure at uh, Amelie uh, <laughs> uh, facility. Yeah, uh, so this is 2018 uh, Eastern Conference Finals. This is, I think, game three or game four. We had a home game against Pittsburgh, 
Mm -hmm. And I come into the building at seven o'clock. Allie and I are both there. Uh, we're drilling the holes for the pregame or for the pre-practice uh, morning skates. So she's drilling. She's on the far end and she drills and she looks and there's green. And I'm out there driving and I see the green and I just I'm white faced after that. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on now? Luckily, we actually had Dan Craig in the building that day. He walks up to the threshold of the far of the other end of the Zam of the Zam gate. And I drive by and I go, Dan, there's green down there in the hole. And you need to go look at that. He he had his coffee in his hand and he just stunned that he heard that. And he's like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> so nope. uh, we drove, I, I drove off whenever I was finished. Um, and we assessed the situation. We actually obviously had a leak, glycol leak in the, in the hole there. Um, so we were trying to slow it down. So we actually called in our engineers as well as our uh, subcontractor that does all the maintenance to the plants to come in and we uh, basically came up with a game plan throughout the day and we let both teams know that, hey, uh, we have an issue on the far end. We didn't tell them exactly what yet because we weren't sure what was going on or what we can do to fix it right away. But uh, long story short, we were a half an hour away from canceling the game, which no one knew about till now, obviously, um, but we were, we actually slowed down the the uh, glycol line, and we called in from Detroit a uh, sealant that we had to bring in uh, via, you know, private jet and put it in that system. And then uh, we prayed that we could slow it down even more. And we actually uh, we did. We uh, we put JB Weld in a sleeve, a metal sleeve, and shoved mm -hmm. it down there. Um, and like I said, we were a half hour away from canceling and we actually got it done to where, uh, we were good by, uh, game time. So, I think you're yeah. referring to, uh, the pro seal, uh, the folks. Yes. Have, uh, yeah. I wasn't yeah. sure exactly what we, uh, used because yep. at the time I was, uh, a nervous wreck, but <laughs> it was, uh, it was definitely, a, a an eye opening experience and nerve wracking, but I actually thank, uh, Dan Craig for being part of that because I would have been lost. <laughs> yeah, that product is a, a lifesaver as long as it's in, not anything greater than a quarter of an inch hold in your uh, line. Right. Then it doesn't yeah. Work. Obviously, it, uh, uh, hats off to Ali only using a probably a, uh, an eighth uh, uh, of an inch bit. <laughs> a drill yes, bit maybe. I actually uh, I blame her every time that I uh, <laughs> that we do it. But in all honesty, it wasn't her fault. She uh, she she just relayed the message, so to speak. It was already leaking inside there beforehand, and mm -hmm. it was a pinhole leak enough to where it was squirting out, and it just was filling up, you know, our hole every time. So we were like, we have to do something here. So uh, it was pretty and crazy because uh, our goalie came over and was like, why don't you just throw something in there and just stop it? I'm like, yeah, it's it's not that easy, but it, thanks. <laughs> And exactly, it's funny you mention that because people really don't understand what's going on to maintain that ice and and how many yeah. feet how many feet are of actual uh, piping is underneath yeah. the actual ice. So it's interesting when, sure. you, when you uh, get uh, feedback like that. Speaking of yeah, feedback, sure. you you talked earlier about the transition uh, from 2004 to present and what you guys have had to deal with. What's been the feedback from some of the players, the long tenure players? Uh, 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 Stamkos and some of the other guys, have they made comments to you folks as far as the conditions of the ice and how they've improved over years? Uh, yeah, actually, um, we, we keep in constant contact. I talk to them um, whenever there's usually a problem. So it's not that often, hopefully, but uh, usually when they do speak, it's usually, hey, the ice is a little soft or a little bit ruddy this time, or, you know, the pucks are bouncing, stuff like that. And the other day we actually had the pucks were bouncing for us. Uh, and we adjusted our even our um, freezers that were uh, in the penalty box. So we actually adjusted those as well. So uh, we're in constant contact with the players, even in the coach too, with John Cooper. Uh, yeah. We try to we try to keep an open communication with each other just so we have uh, that relationship with each other so we can know if we need to fix something quickly, we can. 
Yeah, that communication line staying open. And as you said, usually it's communication uh, towards you guys when something isn't good. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. sure sometimes you get the uh, positive as well. And even for yeah. our, our, our listeners, a lot of people don't realize that the actual pucks are uh, maintained in a freezer inside the uh, uh, timekeeper's yeah. box. What do you uh, guys keep your temperature at for the pucks? Uh, I think the NHL mandates that we have it around 16 to 18 degrees at the this, with the pucks, uh, we have a freezer that they've uh, requested to have, and we've kind of keep that. Sometimes it's a little bit colder, sometimes a little bit warmer. We try to adjust as much as we can, just like we do with the ice. Um, we try to just keep it around that 16 to 18 mark um, for most days. <laughs> Need to uh, let the linesman know less handling of the puck makes the puck not bounce. Yes, huh? exactly. Yes. Try not to hold it in your hand too long either. So it's and, and one a lot of those. Of people yeah, I mean, a lot of people will watch a game on TV and go, why is the uh, ref got the puck sitting on the, the face-off dot? Yeah. And one of the reasons being is maintaining the temperature of the puck. Exactly. So it exactly. doesn't bounce as much on, yeah. the, on the ice. Yeah. yeah. So what are some of your favorite innovations? Because you've been in the industry a long time, Patrick, uh, over the yep. years as far as uh, edgers, machines. We've spoken about fast ice or level ice. What are some of the things that you've uh, recognized that have helped you and your operators uh, maintain the quality of ice that you folks do? Yeah, uh, I actually like the electric edger. Honestly, uh, it's done great for us. Uh, it's quiet, which is a good thing. Um, with us, we have a lot of meetings and stuff in the building or in the bowl, and it's usually right whenever I need to do an edge. It's <laughs> it's like, okay, before I had the gas lit edger, and I would have to wait for them to be done, and it's usually like a half an hour or so, and I'm just waiting there trying for them to finish but with the electric editor i can just do whenever i want and uh it's a great thing um i believe like the zams they're they're coming up with new stuff uh obviously like the level ice the fast ice i do like that i just prefer not to but i do like it i think it's a cool innovation i think for you know the certain uh maintenance if you can or requirement i think it's a great product I love it. Um, when I used it, even for the first one, uh, it was a great, you know, system to have, and uh, it, it put down a great sheet of ice. Honestly, like I, I would definitely recommend doing that again if we could uh, for our next exams. If we do uh, go to that as well, um, I know we're looking into the electric exams uh, coming up here. I think shortly we're going to be looking into uh, electric exams, but. Um, I, that might be a good option to have is the fast size as well, if we could, uh, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, it depends on what Mr. Vink wants to spend. And, yes. uh, it's, uh, it's always, it's always a good thing to have though. That's for sure. Yeah. As far as quality of ice and it, and it's happening as we speak, uh, teams are uh, Seattle Kraken went to electric, of course, Montreal Canadians, uh, they've yeah. been electric for, uh, uh, 18, 20 years now. And there's other teams reaching out to us at, uh, like yourself, yeah. looking at going electric Definitely. and, uh, and yeah, looking at those options, especially uh, the fast ice and level ice. Uh, yeah. a lot of, a lot of teams are with, with it now in the NHL and, uh, mm -hmm. uh the feedback both from operations and from, uh, the actual players has been positive. So yeah, hopefully you guys sure. consider it uh, when you uh, get the sure. machines in. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely. the easy, the easy three, uh, battery edger has definitely been a, uh, a key, uh, a key to the operation of facilities. Like you mentioned, uh, some of the benefits of it, the noise audibly is a lot quieter and uh, most, yeah. Surprisingly, it's actually pretty strong too. It's, it, it cuts a lot, it's a lot more, a lot more consistently consistency on the, the cutting too, as well compared to the gas one, but, uh, definitely. Definitely uh, very shocked um, whenever we did buy that the first time. I was uh, surprised on how strong that battery is. Because we were, we would, there was some days where we were taking out the ice that we would use that thing and it's it's still going. And it's still uh, a good cut. Yeah, 1900 RPM on the uh, on the turntable. You've got uh, eight uh, carbide tip blades. I mean, yeah. it does do a superior cut. And it maintains that speed even under load to a yeah. max cut of three sixteenths. So it's uh, it sure. definitely does definitely does the job that it's supposed to be doing. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. Yeah. So Patrick, uh, maybe you can share any other uh, activities and uh, things that uh, work in your life and what you do in your life outside of the arena that uh, you want to share with the audience. Honestly, that's that, that is my life. Is I love this job. Uh, I never thought I would be a part of this, but uh, I definitely. Uh, 
I'm grateful for every moment that I've had. Uh, I learned from one of the best and I'm continuing to learning from our colleagues and stuff like that. So everyone, even in the NHL, we all try to get together every year uh, with our FOMA meetings and stuff like that. And we're honestly a good brotherhood that we do uh, have. And it's good to reach out every once in a while and just see how everyone's doing. It's pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool that's for sure yeah it is it was unfortunate we've missed uh well actually the last moment we had was at your facility uh down yeah. in Clearwater that was a great yep. time I had a lot of fun great <laughs> yeah, to uh, meet, that, see you and Allie and the team and you guys did a great tour I have to say it was uh one of the most fascinating things I saw in there was that lightning bolt maybe you can share yeah. with the audience what the what <laughs> yeah that's we all actually have for. yeah we definitely have we have two Tesla coils that we have in the building that shoot off like 50 foot of uh, a lightning bolt and it's uh pretty surreal at first the first time we actually installed it we all had to back away <laughs> and just make sure it wasn't going to uh, go arc anywhere else so we uh we have two of them now it's uh, it's a pretty cool experience it's pretty loud uh i don't hear it as much anymore because i've been around it so it's like net second nature to me so it's it's cool though it's a pretty cool experience though to definitely hear but and I think I, I think there was only one when we were there in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. We actually just shot off the one for you guys, but uh, oh, okay. we had two of them. We have one on each end of the uh, the, sh the ice there. So, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that definitely, <laughs> even though we were prepared, we were told to be prepared, that made me jump. <laughs> yeah. That was insane. Yes. That was, that was insane. <laughs> That was that's insane. good though. That's what we were going for. So yeah, well, you did it. You did it. Hey, that's great. <laughs> Patrick, I want to thank you for spending the time with us today. It's been great to talk to you. Great to see you again. It's been a while and uh, all the best yes. for the rest of the season. I want to thank everyone for listening uh, to another episode of Ask the Zamboni Experts podcast. If you have a question for one of our experts or an idea for a future episode, please email your questions or requests to info at Zamboni.com. And for more information on additional podcast episodes, please visit Zamboni.com forward podcasts or search Ask the Zamboni Experts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. This is Marty Elliott, your host, wishing you an ice day.